This is Kasu, and this is his new project, an apartment development project. This is Pereira, the engineer to the project. One day, during a site visit, engineer gives a verbal instruction to Kasu. Kasu, lay granite tiles in the lobby area. But as per the contract, lobby areas are out of ceramic tiles. So if you are Kasu, what would you do? Well, before all that. For the purpose of this demonstration, let's assume the general conditions of this project is governed by SBD02, issued on 2007. And it has many similarities to FIDIC 1999, the Red Book. So let's go and find out what it means by a variation as per SBD02. Any change to the works which is instructed or approved as a variation under clause 13.0 has been interpreted as a variation. So let's see what's there in clause clause 13.0 Variations and Adjustments. This clause comprises of subclauses. Subclause 13.1 Right to vary. This is how things look like on the paper. In the first part of this subclause, this says variations may be initiated by engineer at any time prior to taking over. Also, this subclause goes on to illustrate that variations may include a. Changes to the quantities of any item included in the contract. b. Changes to the quality and characteristics of work. c. Changes to the levels, positions and dimensions of any part of work. d. Commissions of any work unless carried out by others. e. Any additional work necessary for the permanent works. f. Changes to the sequence of timing. It also goes to provide in its latter part contract not make any alteration and or modifications of the permanent works unless and until engineer instructs or approves. So let's see what it is interpreted as permanent works. Permanent works means works to be executed as per the contract. So what does the contract mean? Letter of acceptance or commonly known as LOA Memorandum of Understanding or termed as MOU, Form of bid, Conditions of Contract, Contract Data, Specifications, Drawings, POQ or any other annexures listed in the contract agreement are included into the contract. But one more question. This clause does not provide how does engineer issues his instructions. That is included in subclause 3.3. It states that all instructions issued by engineer shall be in writing. Now we know now we know a basic idea of clause 13.0 and few other clauses that associate with clause 13.0. Let's go back to our story. So here, Kasum did not receive this instruction in writing. But it is obvious that this instruction constitutes a variation. And as per subclause 13.1b. This is a change to the quality and characteristic of work. Hence, this comes under variations and adjustments. In a situation like this, as an experienced contractor, contractor should always take his logbook with him whenever he is going for a site walkthrough with the engineer or site visit, so that he can jot down any verbal instruction and then obtain the consent of the engineer then and there, so that it eases the process of administrating the variations. But in this case, Kasun has not brought his logbook or any likewise material. So, verbal instructions? As an experienced contractor, does his actions demonstrate his best interest towards project? Or can he comply to the verbal instructions and carry out the work? But then again, what about the cost and time impact? In situations like these, let's see what are the remedies available. Kasun could Request the engineer to formalize his verbal instructions by raising a confirmation of verbal instruction, commonly termed as CVI form. So let's see what goes into a CVI form. References of verbal instructions has to be included in the CVI. Demonstration on why this comprises a variation. Ideally, the contract provision. Going back to our example, Kasun could reference clause 13.1b and then quantify the claim. Quantification includes cost and time impact and then go on to substantiate with particulars. 
annex any red breakdown changes to changes to the contract program and likewise particulars. If you want to know how to prepare a CVI, like and comment in our YouTube channel. So we will bring a tutorial about this in our next videos. Once again, coming back to the story. What if CVI also remains unanswered by the engineer? One could argue, put a time bar to the CVI. So if engineer remains silent, take his silence as a confirmation. Another one could argue, engineer is at his discretion to decide whether to respond or not, as CVI is not a part of general conditions of the contract. Another one could argue, contract is permitted by contract to communicate with the engineer. Hence, forget about CVI, raise a formal letter to the engineer and ask him to confirm his verbal instructions in writing. All above are fair prepositions. Hence, your remedy in situations like this will depend on your com company practices. But bear in mind, variations are a broad subject. So we will talk further on this in our next tutorials. At the meantime, we appreciate your comments to this video in the comment section or drop into our Facebook fan page and group and express yourself. Also, do not forget to hit the subscription button and press the bell icon so that you receive our latest videos no sooner they are aired. Let's meet once again and until next time, take care.